And last and proudest, Imrahil, Prince of Dol Amroth, kinsman of the Lord, with gilded banners bearing his token of the ship and the silver swan, and a company of knights in full harness riding grey horses, and behind them seven hundreds of men-at-arms, tall as lords, grey-eyed, dark-haired, singing as they came. Greetings and well met, my friends. Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be discussing the Lord of Dol Amroth of Gondor, Prince Imrahil the Fair. He is a lesser-known character in the Legendarium, but the qualities of this man prove that he is indeed great, and should be better known and remembered. As usual, I'll link some related and helpful articles and videos in the description and cards to further outline this video. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Born in 2955 of the Third Age to Adrahil II, Imrahil would be the lord of the people of Dol Amroth in the region of Belphalas. He had two older sisters, Ivriniel and Finduilas, and his house was the house of Dol Amroth. And so, if the story may be believed, Imrahil's ancestor, Imrazor, a Numenorian, who was the father of the first prince, married Mithrilas, a sylvan elf, and thus Numenorian blood mixed with the blood of the Eldar, creating a lineage of high blood indeed. Now, Imrahil was the twenty-second prince of that line, and through his deeds he was perhaps the greatest of those princes. His older but not eldest sister, Fenduilas, would marry the son of the steward Ecthelion II of Menas Tirith, Denethor II, making Prince Imrahil the brother-in-law of steward Denethor. When Prince Imrahil was fifty-five years old, in 3010 of the Third Age, he took up his father's mantle as prince, but during the years before his rise to princehood, he had four children, three sons named Elfir, Urhirion, Amrothos, and a daughter named Lothiriel. Now, Prince Imrahil's most renowned deeds would occur during some dark days, from the dawnless day to the end of the War of the Ring, after the beacons of Gondor had been lit and the lords of the southern fiefdoms of Gondor came to the aid of the Tower of the Guard, Minas Tirith. On the ninth day of March in 3019, Prince Imrahil of the Silver Swan, his Swan Knights, and 700 soldiers arrived to the White City, singing as they came. They were great men of Gondor, men who knew both ships from the sea and horses from the land, and in skill of horse riding, the great swan knights of Dol Amroth were only rivaled and probably outmatched by many of the riders of Rohan, who themselves were the horse lords. They came to the city bearing the gilded banners of the prince, with a ship and a silver swan upon them. The next day, on March 10th, Imrahil would join Gandalf to save Faramir from the approaching Nazgul as he made his retreat across the Pelennor to the White City. But even Imrahil, the kin of the steward and his sons, could not save his nephew from Denethor's order, when Denethor wanted his son to once more go forth from the city as to not abandon the outer defenses of Osgiliath. But this, of course, would prove nearly ruinous for Faramir and his men and once more Gandalf and Imrahil would go forth from the city in an attempt to save Faramir and his men on March 13th, but Faramir would meet a poisoned arrow and the black breath of the Nazgul. Imrahil drew the arrow out and staunched the wound, and he carried his nephew to Denethor, up through the city. And the steward's spirits were broken thusly on the eve of a great battle, as the steward's son then approached death. When Denethor's concerns were thus turned from the defense of the city, Prince Imrahil was the top-ranking officer in Gondor, but he followed Gandalf the White's lead, as the wizard was forced to take command of the city's defenses. And so ensued the Siege of Gondor and the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, on March 13th through the 15th, during which Prince Imrahil and his knights played a critical role. They, along with the other lords of Gondor gathered therein, saw to the defense of the city and its walls, and while Gandalf gave hope to men, Imrahil and other such lords inspired them to keep fighting, even when the night was at its darkest. As a descendant of Numenor and elves both, his grace and powers surely helped the prince come out unscathed during the battle. But furthermore, after the ride of the Rohirrim onto the Pelennor Fields, such gifts helped him save Eowyn from death also. For after Theoden fell and Eowyn killed the Witch King, the men of Rohan carried the Fallen towards the White City. And on his way from the city into the fray, Prince Imrahil used his Vambrace to see the mist coming from the mouth of Eowyn, and he detected that she still lived. Thus, due to the keen sight and perceptions of the prince, Eowyn was also sent to the Houses of Healing, where would go Faramir also, once Gandalf left Imrahil to save him from the pyre of Denethor. 
In many ways, Faramir and Eowyn both had Imrahil to thank for their lives being saved. One from the onslaught of the Nazgul and their forces when he was retreating to Minas Tirith, and one from the wounds she took from the Lord of the Nazgul himself. Eomer would also have Imrahil to thank for his life, for after seeing that his sister seemed to have died upon the field, the new king of the Rohirrim went into a fury upon the field of Pelennor, and he was outnumbered fighting the hosts of Mordor until Imrahil led his knights, along with the lords Horan, Forlong, and Hirluin into the battle also, and they saved Eomer from the onslaught. Then they stood together, Imrahil and Eomer, Gondor and Rohan, until the coming of the Corsair ships and Aragorn Elisar up Anduin. And thus the lords of the west, Aragorn, Eomer, and Imrahil, led their people and won the battle of the Pelennor Fields, and Imrahil drove the bewildered and terrified Variags away, as well as the orcs eastward, with the thundering hooves of his knights ever about him. And so the battle was over, and Imrahil, Eomer, and Aragorn went together to the broken gate of Menas Tirith. Aragorn would not yet go into the city, as to not cause civil unrest with the will of Denethor, as the time was not yet ripe, and they knew not what had befallen Denethor. Imrahil would agree with this, although he recognized Aragorn's kingship already, and would follow him. Rather, Eomer and Imrahil, who were now friends and brothers-at-arms, would walk the city, coming to look upon Theoden, who was lying in state in the White Tower, and Eomer would learn that Eowyn yet lived, and they would hurry to the Houses of Healing. Imrahil, seeing that both Gondor and Rohan had lost their lords, saw that Eomir would lead the Rohirrim and wondered if they should not send for Aragorn, but he had come. Aragorn had come to heal and was greeted by Pippin with the name Strider, a name Imrahil thought lowly, but Aragorn would still not take up the mantle of kingship yet, and Prince Imrahil would be the de facto steward of Gondor, for Denethor had perished and Faramir was in no state to rule. But there would be little time for politics, as Gimli and Legolas would soon find Imrahil in the city and Legolas would recognize the blood of the kin of Nimrodel in Imrahil. Legolas and Imrahil would thus exchange fair words, summoning Imrahil to Aragorn's camp outside the city, and the Lord would go. Legolas would be astonished by this man, saying that if Gondor still had lords so fair in these later days, great indeed must have been the lords of the realm in the past. And so during the great debate outside of Minas Tirith, it was decided that some should go forth to draw the ire of Sauron, while others, at the behest of Imrahil, would remain behind to guard the city. Hurin the Tall of Gondor would take charge of the men who stayed behind, and Imrahil would go with the host of the West, even though Imrahil thought their force arrayed against the powers of Sauron would be so small, thus being the greatest jest in the history of Gondor, as their army would have hardly made up a vanguard of the forces of the West in ages past. He compared it to a child threatening a mail-clad knight with a toy, or a fly with a little stinger against the Dark Lord. And so the host of the West left the city on March 18th, and headed for the Black Gate, and on their way there, Imrahil advised that the heralds should announce the coming of King Elisar back into the lands of Athelion, as he was retaking that part of the realm of Gondor. It was so. On March 25th, Imrahil was there alongside his new and old friends alike, fighting on the front lines during the Battle of the Black Gate and the bravery of so many heroes and the hobbits in Mordor, as well as some fate, would yield a great victory of the West over Sauron. Imrahil and his men would join in the celebrations at the Fields of Cormallan and the coronation of Elisar afterwards, and likely he was there during the wedding of Aragorn and Arwen. He would also accompany the funeral procession of King Theoden back to Rohan, thus also being present at the wedding of Eowyn and Faramir on August 10th, both of whom Imrahil must have cared deeply for after having saved them. And the joy of new life and love would continue, for Imrahil and Eomer had become great friends ever since they had met during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and Eomer would fall in love with Imrahil's daughter, Princess Lothiriel, and they would be wed in 3021 of the Third Age, and they would have a son named Elfwine. As for Imrahil himself, he would continue to rule in Dol Amroth after the war, and he, alongside Prince Faramir of Athelion, would be King Elisar's chief advisors, and they would sit on the Great Council of Gondor. Imrahil would pass away in 34 of the Fourth Age, at the age of 100, and he would be succeeded by his eldest son, Elfir, the 23rd Prince of Dol Amroth, whose lineage would go forth into his son, Alfros, and beyond. And so we come to the end of our tale about Prince Imrahil, 
of Dol Amroth. From the story of Prince Imrahil, we see how the loyalty and honor of this great man drove him to do what good things he could do. And from his deeds, many more good things happened. We should remember that deeds oftentimes do not stand by themselves, and good actions may bring about more such deeds. We all have our part to play. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about Imrahil? Let me know in the comments below. For me, Imrahil is one of the great lesser-known characters in Tolkien's works that makes Middle-earth an even better place through great deeds of many different heroes. Please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for podcast and Discord server. Links are in the description below. I want to give a huge shout out to our Valor tier patrons over on Patreon. Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, Lane Grimes, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, and Mark Kralik. Thank you guys so much. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a region spotlight on the Barrow Downs. Everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.